It's spring break, and for many of us, that means a time to get away and relax. But for some, that's just not enough. Tonight, the danger tourist who prefers a quick jaunt to a war zone in Iraq. So why do thrill seekers travel to the brink of disaster for fun? ABC's Lama Hassan is looking to find out. This is what most people think a nice vacation looks like. Taking it easy on sun-soaked beaches with friends or family. But for Andrew Drury, this is his idea of a good vacation. Here we could be targets for the snipers at any, any time. Over the years, Drury says he has spent his holidays in hotspots all over the world. Afghanistan, Chechnya, even Mogadishu. And I went to the first time to Mogadishu around about Christmas time. And then I can remember saying goodbye to my children and actually thinking for the first time I could be saying goodbye for the last time. He says he went because he wanted to find the wreckage from the Black Hawk down helicopter. So that is the Black Hawk. That is. Was it worth it? Worth seeing it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's history. Yeah, it was. Drury is on the extreme edge of a new trend. Vacationers looking for a more hands-on travel experience, dubbed danger tourism. You do realise you're risking your life by doing something like that. Yeah, of course. I don't sit down and think. I, I mean, I think my life will end when it ends, but I'm totally rational, as you can see. And so. Well, so. I don't know. That's <laughs> oh, questionable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, perhaps you might question it. When he goes on these trips, he leaves a family behind. Hey, Ruby. He has a wife and kids in Surrey, England. He is a great guy. He's got great personality. He, he makes me laugh. He's a fantastic father. Um, Bobby and Ruby absolutely think he's brilliant. The successful construction company owner keeps a collection of unique souvenirs from his travels in his family home. This is um, from Chechnya. It's got the records, terrorist records. Human remains from the Sudan, from Somalia. I would prefer him to stop, but I think I'd be changing him completely if I made him stop. But even she was at a loss after this last trip. She hadn't, didn't speak to me for two days. Downtown Herbal. This is his video diary from his Iraq getaway on the front lines of the war against ISIS. We've now gained our permission and we're heading off to the front line. They drive towards ISIS-occupied territory. It's quite eerie here, isn't it? And finally reach what he's travelled all this way for. What you see is the uh, front line ahead is ISIS held territory. Those flags there are the black recognisable flags. And later, a scary front row seat. To the battle against ISIS. Someone's been shot on this side of the front line, so we're pretty much under attack now. I didn't feel threatened, and even when the gunfire happened, they seemed to be going about their jobs, and I was kind of drawn into the situation. We were returning fire. I don't think it gets real of this in the front line. I hate to say it, I really did enjoy it, and the adrenaline, the buzz, and since I've come back, I haven't slept for three days. The cost of this trip? About $2,800, including airfare. Possible funeral expenses not included. Are you scared of dying? Do you actually think about death? I don't think about death in the match, and when I do these trips, I'll die. That's amazing. I mean, if someone's listening to you, they'll probably think you're barking mad. For those less mad, there are somewhat tamer options. So-called adventure tourism has become big business, according to one study accounting for $263 billion a year worldwide. But there are others like Drury who try to push the envelope even further, and it doesn't always end well. In 2009, three UC Berkeley students were captured while hiking along the border of Iran. We have good food and we have um, medical care, which is appreciated. Iran imprisoned them for more than a year. After their release, they expressed regret in a CBS News interview. In retrospect, I wish we hadn't hiked so far. But that's in hindsight. And then there's the British adventurer seeker Neil Lawton and his friend. These photos on his Twitter feed of when they tried to cross the frozen Bering Strait, seen here in this dramatic Coast Guard video, rescued after thin ice had stranded them for 12 hours. 
and high above the Andes Mountains of Bolivia. These adrenaline-seeking tourists signed up to ride their bikes down El Camino de la Muerte, which literally translates to the death road. He assures me it's safe. <laughs> These crosses lining the roadway are in memory of the thousands who have died here cascading off the cliff sides. For many thrill seekers, it's an alluring flirtation with danger that drives them. Perhaps it's what drove Britain Ben Innes to pose with an alleged hijacker on an Egypt Air flight earlier this week. My colleague David Muir spoke with him earlier today. And what were you trying to accomplish by taking that image? I wanted him to understand that I was a human, I was doing human things, that I wasn't just a, a nameless, faceless victim. I also wanted to get a better look at the device, at him. I needed to understand if he had any other weapons. Is there any regret in calling it the best selfie ever? In terms of regret, I have no regrets whatsoever. Neither does Andrew Drury, who is already planning his next trip. Do you think you'll ever stop? I can't. No, I don't want to stop. And in hopes of bringing along as many people as possible on his future trips, yep, you guessed it, a reality show is in the works. For Nightline, I'm Lama Hassan in London.